What's up guys, it's Joe from GGD and I'm here today just to make a really quick tutorial showing you how to root our libraries out into your DAW with contact seven. I'm using logic. The steps should be the same in any DAW, but you might need to do some Googling or looking in your uh, manual to kind of see how you do the equivalent steps inside your door. But let's get to it. So as you can see, I've got an empty MIDI track with no instruments on. So I'm going to go and load up contact seven. Now in logic, you get the options of loading different types. I'm going to go multi output 25 times stereo. I advise sticking to stereo outputs in contact. If you start mixing mono and stereo output, things can start getting a little bit weird. So just go for stereo and you'll be laughing. So we're going to do the largest one, which is 25 because we want many to choose from. Now in contact seven, when you load it up for the first time, things look a little bit different than contact six. Uh, the, the major difference is you have this different start screen, which um, is like, it just shows all your libraries. And if you click on one of them, um, it'll show you the snapshots of the library, not the interface, but we wanna be able to see the interface, right? So to get that, you simply just come up here and click this icon up here on the toolbar. And you can see we get back to the view that we're more familiar with in contact six. Cool. So P5 is loaded up. For now, we're going to get rid of this so we can just have a look at things. All looking lovely, but we want to root these channels out, don't we? So let us get the outputs up. If they're not up, you simply come up here and click this uh, little button here. This is basically showing you what you can see. So if I want to I load up the master stuff, I can click that, but I don't need them for that. Or the uh, quick load, which has like some of your instruments that you can quick load, but we don't need to do that. We just need the outputs. So let's get the outputs menu up. Now this is the bit most people find the most confusing and it is a little bit, but I'm here to show you through it. And once you kind of understand how it all works, it's actually very simple. So we need to make enough channels in the output section of contact so that we can root out everything we want to inside P5. So for this, I'm going to do things. Um, I'll do things how I would normally do it. So that's going to be one channel for kick, two for snare, for snare top, snare bottom. I'm going to do one for each of the racks. So we've got rack one, sorry, for each of the toms. So we've got rack, floor tom, floor tom. Then we're going to do uh, overheads, spot mics, and then mono and both rooms sum to one. So that's a total of 10 outputs that we're gonna need inside contact. So the way to get those is come down to the output section and click this plus sign. Now this brings up the outputs window. So I'll talk through what each of these bits do because this is the bit where some people get a bit confused. So the quantity is the number of outputs we need, okay? So we know that we need 10 outputs. So I'm gonna come up here and click 10. The number of channels is not related to the number of outputs, but the number of channels per output. So we know that we want each of these to be stereo outputs. So that means we need two channels per output, right? If you were doing mono, it would be one. If you're doing like some surround sound kind of thing, you could do five channels per output, but we know we need two for stereo. So that means we're gonna get 10 outputs each with two channels. Then we go to host output. Simply just click one. That means it's gonna start from the first stereo channel output available. You want to make sure ascending output assignment is clicked because that means when it creates these tracks, all the outputs are going to be ascending, which is vital. Um, I'm gonna do delete existing channels before creating new ones. I wanna click that. And what I would also advise doing is making this your default configuration. So um, I'm gonna click that. And what that means is every time you load up contact, I'm gonna start with a quantity of 10 outputs, each with two channels. And that's all I ever really use contact for. So to avoid having to do this every time, I would definitely make sure you say, make this your default configuration. And I'm gonna click okay. Output configuration was saved as default. And you can see here that we have 10 delicious looking outputs each with two channels. We can check that by seeing these output numbers are going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So that's the hard bit done. 
Now I'm going to pop into Logic and create the outputs here. So in Logic, this is really easy. It knows I've loaded a multi-output version of contact. And when you do that, you get these little plus and minus signs. As I said earlier, it's probably gonna be different in your DAW. So you need to go and find out how to make sure you've loaded the multi-output version and how to expand those outputs. But in Logic, you just click this. So we need 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And just to make the point, we can see that this goes up to 19 and 20. You can ignore these aux channels. Those are for different things. Just ignore them for this. But you can see that these stereo channels here, it goes up to 20. And you can see here that it says contact 19 to 20. So that means we are on the right track. Now, the next step is to go and rename the channels so we can easily see where we need to route things to. So as I said, how I'm going to route this is I know I want a single kick channel. Then we've got snare top, snare bottom, rack tom, floor tom one, floor tom two. Then we've got overheads. Then I'm going to do a spot mic channel. Then a single track for the mono and then both rooms summed to that. Now to be organized, I'm going to go and mimic these labels inside logic. Okay, that's done. So now we get to routing the channels out of our P5 library or whatever GGD library you're using. The way to do that is beneath each channel inside the library, you get these drop down menus here. If you click that, huh? Okay, well, that obviously isn't right. To fix that, you just need to go up here and click this exclamation mark. That's going to make contact rescan your outputs and repopulate everything you've got going on. Now you can see we've got the full list here. Uh, so now we just need to go through our library and route everything out to the correct bits. So kicks, kick channels, I know I want going to the kick. Overheads, obviously to the overhead, mono to mono, rooms to rooms. And you do that for each window here. So snare, I've got one snare top, snare bottom, overhead. Oops, not to the spot, to the mono please. And then rooms to rooms. And what this is doing is making sure all these channels are going out to the right outputs, which then will make them go to the right output in your DAW. So hats, I'm going to put to the spot mic, splash to the spot, ride to the spot, crash ride to the spot, stack to the spot, overheads to the overheads, mono to the mono, rooms to the rooms. Now we've done that, everything should be looking just lovely. So we can see here, if I do the kick, we've got the outputs working correctly in contact. Go into logic and have a look. That looks good to me. Snare, we are rocking. Rack tom's going to rack tom, floor tom's going to floor tom one. Then we can check the spot mics. So there we have it. That is how to root out one of our drum libraries from Contact 7 into your DAW so you can then process them individually. Uh, well, I hope that was really helpful to you guys. And um, as I said, it is a little bit confusing to start with, but once you get your head around what the terminology actually means in that output window and the fact that you can save it as a default configuration, it's easy. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will catch you next time.